Today we're going to be discussing collecting photography books. I'm Howard. Welcome to the channel. So when I talk about collecting photography books, let me be clear who I'm talking about. I'm talking about you and I. I'm not talking about people that spend thousands upon thousands of dollars for rare collectible first editions. If you do that, first of all, you have to put on the white gloves to get the book out of the humidity controlled chamber in order to even enjoy it. So no, we're not talking about that. And in addition, you could spend $19,000 buying an original first edition of Robert Frank's The Americans, or you could get this, which I think cost me about $25. You could spend $7,500 on a first edition of Henri Cartier-Bresson's The Decisive Moment, or you could get this wonderful facsimile that just came out a couple years ago and comes with lots of extras and a nice slipcase for about 70 bucks, I think I paid for it. Now, every so often you might get lucky. And I actually purchased from Amazon the first edition in 2004 of Alex Soth's Sleeping by the Mississippi, which supposedly is now worth $1,000 if it was signed by the author, which this one is not. But if you want to make an offer, it might be for sale. So, we're not talking about investors, we're talking about photographers who want to enjoy the art of photography and enjoy the masters that have come before them. And I'll tell you a little secret. The printing process today is so far more advanced than in those original first editions, not the Alex Soth that's recent, but uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson or Robert Frank, the ones that I'm showing you here that are incredibly expensive. The printing process today is far better. So if your goal is to enjoy the photo, and come as close to seeing the original photograph as you can, you're far better off with the $25 copy. Now, let's talk about six reasons why I think if you're a photographer, you ought to consider collecting photography books as well. The first is probably the most obvious, and that's to be inspired. I mean, who can look at a book of great photographs and not get excited about the idea of going out and taking some pictures of your own? It's really very motivating. And also, while you're looking at those books, you often get ideas that you might want to bring into your own work. The second reason is that it lets you explore areas of photography that you may not be familiar with. For example, I don't do much work with portraiture, but I really enjoy looking at books of great portraits. It lets me expand my photographic horizons. Plus, if there's a specific genre of photography you think you might like to expand into, why not get a couple of books of pictures of that particular type of photography and see if those images really draw you in and if that's something that excites you. The third reason is that you, there's a lot to be learned by looking at the masters. I mean, when you're looking at a book of photographs and you find photos that you really enjoy, it's a great idea to start asking yourself some questions. You know, things like, why did the person frame the photo that way? Why did they leave this in the photo and not take it out? How are they using highlights and shadows? And if the way they're using highlights and shadows intrigues you, is that something you might want to bring into your own work? Number four is that depending on the kind of books that you're drawn into, it may help you to define and learn about your own photographic style. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you find that you're constantly attracted to, say, books of abstracts or books of intentional camera movement or soft focus or sharp landscapes, that might really tell you something about what you want to explore and help you to develop your style. The fifth reason is to go deeper into a specific photographer. Most photographers have what one would call, for lack of a better term, their greatest hits. They're pictures that have gone mainstream and that most people know about. But almost assuredly, they have dozens, if not hundreds, of photos that you would like. And the best way to see them, and often the only way to see them, is really to get a book that covers a whole gamut of their work. And that really lets you explore them deeper. And the sixth reason is that we're photographers, and so we enjoy photography. 
I mean, it's very relaxing to sit down with a photography book and just leaf through it and enjoy some of the photographs. So I have a large number of photography books, so it's really hard to say this is my favorite or that is my favorite. I mean, it really depends on your mood at the moment. But what I'd like to do is just share a few books with you that I really enjoy. So I'd like to quickly share with you today six books that I really enjoy, along with a few photos from each book. And if the book's still in print, I'm going to leave in the description down below uh, a link where you can find it in case you're interested in it. The first is Snaps by Elliot Erwitt. Elliot Erwitt, the, the part I like about him the most is the incredible humor that you can sometimes find in his photos. Erwitt really seems to enjoy a, a bit of wry humor in his photographs. Next is Arnold Newman, my favorite portrait photographer. Really probably one of the greatest portrait photographers who ever lived. I, I truly enjoy this book. You've probably seen his portrait of Stravinsky and very likely have seen his portrait of Picasso as well. But if you've seen his portrait of Alfred Krupp, a industrialist who was also a Nazi war criminal, who he specifically tried to make look like the devil, when he took his portrait. Next is a book by one of my absolute favorite photographers, Michael Kenna. This is Forms of Japan. And I'm just blown away by Michael Kenna's long exposure work. His photos are so evocative to me. I have a lot of his books and this is just one of them. They're all fantastic. Though these photographs don't show his long exposure work, they're very typical of the kind of peaceful serenity that his photos evoke. Keith Carter's A Certain Alchemy. I really enjoy the emotion that he brings out in his photographs through the use of selective focus and blur. Carter utilizes a large format camera system with a tilt shift lens mechanism and uses that tilt shift to sh throw portions of his photograph out of focus. Martha Casanave, Exploration Along an Imaginary Coastline. She's another photographer who really uses blur in an incredible way. I really enjoy her work. As opposed to Carter and his tilt-shift mechanism, Casaneve achieves her blur by using a pinhole camera. Maggie Taylor, No Ordinary Days. Taylor does composites, digital composites, and I really enjoy the photos that she puts together. This is a really wonderful book. Interestingly, Taylor uses in her composites components that have been scanned usually on a flatbed scanner as opposed to being taken with a more traditional camera. And finally, someone who's really affected me personally, Nancy Rotenberg. This is Photography and the Creative Life. Nancy was uh, a teacher who really had a great influence on my photography and really a great influence on anyone that knew her. Wonderful person. She passed away way too young. Uh, this book may actually be being reprinted. Uh, and if I have any information on that by the time this video comes out, again, I'll leave it below in the comments. Really, a book of photographs and a book of her philosophy. Highly recommended. Nancy used to say that in order to take meaningful and evocative photographs, you had to develop a relationship with your subject. She would call it going beyond the initial handshake. I do hope you enjoyed this video about collecting photography books. And if you have any favorite photography books that you'd like to share, or other reasons that you collect photography books, please leave them in the comments section below. I'd love to see what they are, and probably other people would like to see what books are your favorites as well. 
If you'd like to see more videos like this, I'd really appreciate your subscribing to the channel by clicking the subscribe button below. I'm Howard, and we'll see you next time.